Genesis, uh, Genesis, Psalms chapter 6, a chapter that's overwhelming in problems. And as we go through the, the book of Psalms, we're going to see high times and we're going to see low times. And there are psalms to your mood of the day, the mood of your time. And you can find online or a book, you know, how you feel, what troubles you're going through, and what psalms to read. Well, this one's when you're overwhelmed. O oh Lord, rebuke me not in thy anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. And David wrote this, and God is holy and right. And he's pleading, God, and he's thinking by the, by the realm of this chapter, God, you must be mad at me. You'll find the like statement, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 24. Jeremiah 10, verse 24. Now, God is holy and right. Whatever God does, he does it is correct. God doesn't have to double think. And I'm going to make a statement in a moment about man. Uh, Jeremiah 10, 24. The Bible says, Jeremiah said, O Lord, correct me, but with judgment and not in thy anger. Least thou bring me to nothing. Now God will bring the wrath. I mean, he got mad at Israel all through. At one time, Moses had to tell the Lord, you know, well, actually a couple of times. You know, Lord, if you do it, the Egyptians are going to say, you just brought them out here to kill them. Now, God was perfectly right because of sin, judgment. And when you get God angry to the point, then you're going to get chastisement. And you find that in Hebrews chapter 12 or 13. But this is a proper cause for a human parent. When it comes to chastising your children. Calm down. Think it out. Don't be rash and don't be quick to punish and chastise. Calm down, think it out, look at, make sure about what you're going to do is assure. Make sure the, the punishment is to what has actually happened and you're punishing the right child. But again, God's always right. And David's speaking out, oh, well, God, you know, look what you're doing to me. Have mercy on me. That goes right along verse 1. O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, O Lord, O Lord, O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. He's, he's playing and saying, Lord God, you're doing all this. You're angry with me. Lord, I, I need mercy. I don't need judgment. I need mercy. My soul is also vexed, sore vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? How long are you going to do this, Lord? And when God does chastise, it's correct. And it probably is the anger of God. And God does show us mercy. He does not give us to exactly what we have due to us. But when you feel like you are being chastised by God, and you may not, but if you are, right there, seek the mercy of God. Return, O Lord, deliver my soul, and save me for thy mercy's sake. Now that is for David being overwhelmed. That's also a second advent. Lord God, I mean, when is Israel had enough? We had it for seven years. The time of Jacob's trouble in the last three and a half years is called the Great Tribulation, Lord. Let up. It's not... Let's, let's go let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews is 12 or 13. We need to read that. Hebrews 12. Again, we gotta look at God does everything right, but not a human father or a mother. And sometimes even I've been guilty, we've been rat. We find out, oh, we go into rage. We shouldn't. Verse 6. Hebrews 12, 6. Nope. Hebrews 12, 3. For consider him God that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. 
ye have not resisted unto the blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation that speaketh unto you as the children, as unto children. My son, God speaking, my son, God's son, despise not the chasing of the Lord. Now David didn't despise it. David's like, Lord God, stop. David never said I didn't destroy, I didn't deserve it. But Lord, let up. Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't quit. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scorneth every son whom he receiveth. You're not the only ones getting the, getting the scorning and the, the correction and the chastisement of God. God does it to all his children. If ye endure chastening, that's hard, that's a hard statement. But if you endure it, correction, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chases not? You are a child of God and you sin against God, he's going to chasten you. It's going to happen. You're not going to get out of it. Now you may get out of, it of your parents. But God's some form way. If you endure chasing and God deals with you as a son. And what son is he whom the father chases not? But if ye be without chastisement. If you don't get the punishment. Whereof are ye partakers? Then you are bastards and not sons. If God doesn't chasten you. You're not a child of God. You're the child of the devil. How's that for a statement? Furthermore, we have had fathers, small f, human fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, or should correct us today, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father, capital F, of spirits, and live God? For barely a few days chasing us after their own pleasure. Now a parent may, may chastise a child because you embarrassed me in front of these people. Or you upset my day. You upset whatever it could be. Or even, you know what, you may think it's the stupidest rule that you've been chastised for. But he, God, for our profit. That we might be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chasing for the present right now, if you get, seems to be joyous. It don't, David, Stiley, and anybody, but grievous. Chastisement of God has never been de designed by God to be, oh, I love it, keep doing it. It's to down that you have done wrong, and I want your attention. And it gets your attention, I hope. Some people don't. Proverbs says, you know, as many rods and many whips and many stripes upon a fool, and yet he stays in his foolishness. That's bad. Nevertheless, after it yieldeth it, the correction yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. So, going back to Psalm, chastisement is to help us and it makes us more righteous. It makes us think before we go sin or do wrong again, uh, what's it going to cost? And the problem is for some sins that we enjoy, it's, sometimes the punishment is enjoyment just so we can enjoy that sin. That's a harsh statement, but true. And David's like, God, you're punishing me. Mercy. But he never says, I don't deserve it. You won't find that in this chapter. Verse 4, the second advent, verse 5, for in death. Now David's going to the extreme. God, you're going to chase me till I die. And every child's going to think that at one point. There. Man, you're going to keep beating me till I'm dead. You're going to not have my telephone till I'm dead. That's not the case. And the pro there's a proverb that says, you know, if you beat your child, he's not going to die. Because a loving parent will not chastise their children to the point of death, because you know what? A loving parent's gonna say, that's enough. And yet it may not be enough. The love of a parent's like, listen, when a parent says this is gonna hate this hurt me more than you, for a loving parent, it does because it breaks our heart. 
And I, for the child, yes, it hurts. <laughs> but for a loving Christian parent of the Bible, when a child is chastised, I guarantee, at least for me, you don't get more than what you should do or get. You get less. Because the heart of the parent. Now, there are children out there who get beat, and they get beyond beat, and there's no love of the parent. And there is a ungodly beating that can do destruction. And there's a godly beating where, you know what, you do show mercy. But David says, for in death, you're going to kill me, God. That's what he's saying. Whatever God's doing to David. But then again, I had children, they'll start crying before I do anything. Wait, wait a minute, I even started it. Put the tear. And Proverbs said that. Yield not to their crying. Crocodile tears. Therefore is no remembrance of thee. Now remember, we are in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is you didn't die and be absent from the body and presence of the Lord. You died, you went to Abraham's bosom. And your soul probably too, because when Samuel came up. So when an Old Testament person right with God, died and went to Abraham's bosom. There's no praising of God. Now for a Christian to be absent from the body and presence of the Lord, our spirit and our soul goes to God and probably most likely we rejoice with those that are in heaven. We rejoice with the angels. We rejoice with the cherubim. But what is in the grave? Because look what he says. In the grave, who shall give thee thank? That body's in the grave. That body ain't thanking God. That body's sleeping. That body's dead. The body that gives you sin, the body that gives you flesh, the body that gives you trouble, it's not a it praising God. It's in the grave silent. But for the Christian to be absent from the body, our soul, we're up in glory having a good old time. But when we read Psalms chapter 6, doctrinally, historically, it's for a man that when he, in the Old Testament, when he died, he went to Abraham's bosom. And it looks like, according to Gospel of Luke, the only one that's awake there is Abraham. So, verse 5 is Old Testament, but as far as the body of a Christian, yeah, your, body, your body's not doing nothing. Your soul is. A man's soul that goes into hell, Old Testament and New Testament, is in torment. I am weary. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens to people who get chastised. So, oh, I, oh, my, da I, my dad chastised. Oh, I'm in so weary. I'm so much pain. David saying, chapter six. Yes, that is one of the fruits of chastisement. I am weary with groaning. Ow, ooh, ow, ooh, ow, ooh, ow, ooh, hurts all the night. <laughs> Come on, children, if you're listening to this. All the night make I my bed to swim. So this chastisement, according to David, is not 15 minutes. It's been nights. And it's bringing tears to David that what God is doing to him that he believes is chastisement. I water my couch, a type of chair. With my tears, uh, day and night, I am weeping, I am crying, I'm crying out to God, enough, God. My eye is consumed because of grief. There's another word with chastisement. There's another word with overwhelming grief. Or did we have, did we switch? Have we gone to David's overwhelming, the problems of his life? Lord God, this is what I'm going through right now. Because he says here, uh, I, my soul is sort of vexed, and he goes, I'm dead. I'm weary to groan all night, my, make my bed to swim. I water my couch with tears. My eyes consume because of grief. I am wax old because of all my enemy. We've changed. Somewhere along the line, David said, God, you're punishing me. 
God, I am weeping. I am crying. I am overwhelmed. I'm vexed. I'm groaning. Grief. And it's because of my enemy. But yet God will use the enemies, and he has used the enemy, to chastise his people. He brought the Philistines in. He brought Babylon in. He brought the, the Syrians in. He brought the, the people of the land, the Canaanites in, to chastise the Egyptians. Exodus chapter 1. Man, they went after and attacked the Israelites. Now, Exodus chapter 1 is not God chastising Israel. I believe God allowed it to happen to Israel. I don't want you to come back to Egypt. So chapter 6, we learn a lesson. When we are being chastised, we're being overwhelmed by our enemy. Is God allowing it? Is the devil allowing it? Or are you doing it? Or are you overreacting? Oh, Lord, rebuke me with, with, not with thy anger, neither chasten me with thy hot uh, displeasure. Those are the words of David. And look, it says, the title of this hymn, To the Chief Musician on Nerioth, it's an instrument, a string instrument, upon Shimoneth, which means eight. It's an eight of octave of music. And people understand music, understand. A Psalm of David. We're reading, this is a song. Oh, Lord, rebuke me not with thy anger, neither chasten me with... The... That's a song. And he goes, my enemies are attacked. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. We've gone from the verse, God, you chastise me, and now it's my enemy. And it may not be God, but don't we blame God for things that happen that God may not have done. And the Lord caused David to number Israel. Okay? Go to the next book. And the devil caused, or Satan caused David to number Israel. We are in this realm of the book of Job. Devil says, let me at him. God says, okay, but don't do this. Devil says, let me at him. God says, okay, but don't do this. Who did it? And yet the Lord says himself, I create evil. Not sin, evil. So, oh Lord, rebuke me with thy anger. It may not be God chastising David. David may be overreacting. It may be the enemy. Or it may be the enemy is chastising David because the Lord says, go get him. David sinned with Bathsheba and killed Uriah. And, and God says, okay, you know what? I'm going to raise up a neighbor, which turned out to be Absalom, his son. And he's going to go after you. And he's going to chase you. And he's going to take your wife. And he's going to have uh, sexual relations upon the whole Israel to see. God chastised the romance and the murder of Bathsheba and Uriah with Absalom. Is that, that's, I don't believe this is the story of what I'm saying. That is chastisement for David's sin. Now, what did David deserve all the time that he was chastised by King Saul? Nothing. Did God do it? No. Did the devil do it? That's, that's a hard question because the devil did not want David to be on the throne because the devil probably knew who David would be. What about King Saul? Oh, yeah, he would. Because, listen, if the David gets ahead, my son's not going to be king. He's going to usurp me. And he's already taken my, one of my daughters to be his, his wife. Where do you go with that mess? So chapter 6 is about overwhelming. It's about chastisement. Is it God? I don't know. Is it the enemy? I don't know. But the enemy's there. Are they there because they're the enemy? Or are they there because God says, go get them? You take us on with, with the public ministry we have. All right, you know what? That, Snally, you're getting a little thick in the head. I'm going to have that DJ bother you. You don't like him. You pray against him. I'm going to allow him to do what he's doing. All right? God will use that. 
All right, what about when the DJ is just being the D DJ and doing what his job is and, and hating the word of God? What, what, is it, what is it when God's doing it and what is it when he's doing it or is the devil trying to stop the ministry? Who can tell? Not me. But if I'm a child of God and if I've sinned against God, we read in Hebrews, God is going to chastise me because I'm his child. Sometimes I don't recognize it as the devil. Sometimes, I, I mean, God. Sometimes I recognize, oh, the devil. Verse 7, my eyes are consumed. David's in tears. Now, is David right with God? Yes. He's got the sure mercy today. I don't know if he's having it now or yet. There's no dates of these. But David will or has the sure mercies of God. David's a man after God's own heart. Okay, where do you get the prosperity gospel there when David's tearing, crying all night long, crying all day long, and he thinks God is beating him and his enemies are chasing him? Where is the prosperity of David? Where is the peace of David? Where is the peace of the Catholic Church that gives all nations that, oh yeah, if you follow our church, we'll give you peace. Where is it? It don't happen. Now God will give peace during the realm of, of Solomon, but he had his adversaries too when he went against God. And when he sinned against God and he married all those wives, he got all those horses, he sent men back into Egypt. Then God sent him Jeroboam, the adversary. He sent them two other men to be adversaries, and that's chastisement. Verse 6, you got a waterbed, and the waterbed is not being filled with, with a, a hose, it's being filled with tears. My eye is consumed because of grief. And wax old because of all my enemy. You know, you age. Your body more when you got adversaries, you got the enemy and chastisement. You get more wrinkles, you get more age, and then if you worry and all that, that ages you. Not good. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. Well, that's he's not talking to God. Now did God send them? <laughs> For the Lord God has heard the voice of my weeping. Hey, enough, enough. God's heard me. Stop it. And there are times when a parent will have a child. They are correcting that child. That child's crying. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. And sometimes it won't. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. I'm praying for mercy. I'm praying to stop. Let all my enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. You're sore vexing me, verse 3. You guys reap what you're doing to me. Let them return. All right, so they're there. And be ashamed suddenly. I'm going to end this, this plight of being chastened by God with my enemies. I'm going to end this anxiety of tears and mourning and overwhelming. But my enemies go home and they're ashamed by when they go home. If it is the chasing of the Lord, the one that should be ashamed would be the sinner. Should be the child that has caused the crime in the house that I am chasing you because you committed this sin, this crime. It is the child, not the parent, to be ashamed. Or the other children. If you got God chastising David, David's done wrong, and there's a third party, the enemy, why would they be ashamed? I'll tell you what a chastising does in the house. The other children see, uh-oh, he got it. He got it for two. I better not do that. At least they're supposed to do that. Capital punishment, going to prison is supposed to be, I don't want to go there and I don't want that to happen to me. 
I better not do it. I better think twice. But in this day and age, it doesn't. Too bad. Too sad. <laughs>